So here, we have started the recording now. Before we progress into more sort of practical discussions about how we can really plan and run a successful certification campaign, please allow me just to say a few words about the context of, a web, of the webinar and, um, you know, how it, how it was uh, sort of set up and the reasons behind it. Many of you might know that Telecenter Europe, together with some partner organizations, are uh, developing a project which is called Unite IT, really trying to uh, develop a new inclusive and more vibrant inclusion network across Europe. Uh, of course, this network has many objectives. I will only sort of speak very briefly across some of the um, activities that we are planning to develop within the network. And you will see that amongst those activities, one of the projects we want to develop is this uh, series of seminars where people can actually come together and discuss uh, topics and uh, uh, issues that are of interest to them or where they feel they need more support in developing their own activities. So therefore, just very, very briefly, as an introduction, you know, we are currently establishing a network to which you're obviously all welcome, um, which is dedicated to basically support members and organizations that are very, very active in the area of inclusion. Of course, many of us already know each other, but the idea is, and I would like to ask you to share the information and the, the kind of idea of the project and invite as many of your um, partner organizations to join the network because there will be lots of interesting discussions and topics coming up. Uh, we are developing an online portal which you find uh, available and which has been already shared with many of you in, within the working group. Uh, please feel free to join any of the working group. There are four working groups there. And we, as we speak, we are the working group on education, training, and certification. It's a, for the moment, it's only about 30 of us who, who have joined this uh, working group. But uh, we hope that in the coming weeks and months, there will be many more going. Uh, one of the other activities is obviously pooling of resources, which is uh, one of the very important activities of this network because we should be learning from each other. And this is what we are actually trying to do right here, right now with this webinar. You know, we're not trying to sort of do any theoretical analysis on anything, but what we're trying to do is really share resources and the ideas and thoughts of how best to do our jobs in the inclusion world. As you can see, as a specific activity, is, uh, we have uh, highlighted the establishment of the working group. Thank you all for joining the education training and certification working group. I mean, we only together will be able to, to, to kind of build on each other's experience and, and, and learn from each other. Just a few more very, very quick um, introduction on the other activities. Of course, the uh, Inclusion Network is um, aiming to raise awareness with the European Commission and within each uh, national uh, country, you know, about the very, very important topics of inclusion, but also in employment and empowerment through, um, through digital media. We would be, of course, also promoting some links between uh, various organizations, funders, and national governments. We hope we will be able to provide everyone that is part of this network with, you know, reports that are of, you know, of interest to the inclusion work. And of course, like many of you might already know and might have already participated, you know, we will be continuing to organize um, a yearly conference where we bring together, you know, uh, the wide inclusion community, the United IT community, to come together and talk physically and face to face about future projects, learning from the past, but also doing our job better. So this was just a little bit of a context around the kind of project and about the, the sort of medium in which this webinar is happening. 
And since we are part of the working group called, as I said, uh, training certificate, education training and certification, we thought that it might be a good idea to share uh, with you and hear from you, of course, any any experiences or only any certification sort of uh, project that, that you might have run. Now, the thought of organizing a webinar around certification is also a very happy one because it meets uh, with a um, uh, campaign that Calisante Europe has been recently putting together with uh, Microsoft Learning, which it is a Europe-wide campaign through which Microsoft Learning has donated or has provided through Telecenter Europe over 10,000 exam vouchers uh, for uh, the Telecenter community, which basically means that 10,000 individual people take some or leave some, a more or less 10,000 people would be able to uh, experiment and uh, try, you know, uh, to achieve their certification. Of course, from an uh, overall point of view, the campaign has been targeted mostly on young people because we are all aware that, you know, unemployment is really, really high and that the, today's uh, youth, you know, this cannot fill any of the 600,000, 900,000 jobs that are available in new in the IT sector. So therefore, with this initiative, uh, Telecenter Europe with partner organization has tried to bring in some support to actually bridge and have some of the young people into these IT jobs through them achieving the certification and therefore proving that they have the skills of IT competence that is required in today's society. So um, I would like to to invite really James Vaughan and I would like to introduce you to those of you who um, who don't I haven't haven't met him yet. James Barnham uh, is uh, representing the European Skills and Certification Network, and he has been instrumental in helping Telecenter Europe and partner organizations on board in this certification opportunity. So, James, if I can just hand over to you for a minute, and if you could just give us a, you know, maybe just a context about, you know, how we got here and maybe a past experiences of certification that have, have happened maybe in the past years. And once we get this, uh, this, this kind of uh, background from you, we will move on to really practical things and really start discussing what we really need to think about when we actually implement a certification campaign. Thanks, Gabby. Um, and uh, just looking down the the list here of people, I'm pretty sure I've spoken to everyone or been in touch with everyone at, at one point or another. So, um, hello again. Um, yeah, as Gabby said, uh, and as most of you um, know, I've been um, working with with Telecenter Europe uh, this year on the, the MOS and MTA campaign. Um, and those of you that were involved also last year, um, where there was a similar campaign but only focused on uh, on MTA. And also uh, was was impacting 2,000 people. So um, the good news about all of this was that off the back of the success um, that we had last year with the MPA campaign, um, Microsoft um, have obviously felt comfortable uh, and happy with um, with the Telecenter Europe network to um, yeah make that campaign five times bigger and then reach out to 10,000 uh, young people. Um, who, as Gabby said, have the opportunity to um, learn and uh, and take a, a, a certification in either MOS or MPA. Um, the good thing about bringing MOS uh, into this year's campaign was that I think it, um, it applies uh, a lot more to, to some of your your networks. Um, for those of you that that um, uh, you know, just to put some context around it and uh, you know a, a, a quick elevator on both certifications the MOS campaign the, the MOS certification Microsoft Office Specialist is 
obviously um, uh, qualifying uh, competences in Microsoft Office applications, uh, whether it be Word or Excel or PowerPoint, um, which is relevant for quite a broad range of people. It could be uh, yeah, youngsters that are at school um, that are involved in, um, in, in technology in some way. Um, it could also be, uh, you know, all the way up to, um, uh, you know, someone that is even even retired. I know this isn't the focus of our focus of our campaign, but more and more um, things like and programs like Moss uh, fall into the realms of um, the next platform on top of the the real digital literacy area. Um, so that's that's really what Moss is. MTA, as you know, that is a, that is an academic, um, largely an academic program. Um, there is a, a sh an offshoot of that which uh, now includes private sector. But um, the benefit with with MTA for academia is that it really gives students the opportunity to um, to get an official and recognised certification uh, in a specific subject from a recognized vendor, which then of course they can use, um, you know, when going into either university or, uh, you know, having their first first jobs. Uh, um, but it also gives them some confidence uh, and it's a much smaller step to take than some of the um, larger Microsoft certifications, the professional certifications, which were available uh, and the only things available a few years ago. So. Um, it's a really, really great opportunity. Um, I know that there is several different um, pitches that has been made to, to, to you guys and, uh, and, and generally from whether it's Microsoft that are, uh, are kind of pitching the certification um, and uh, you know um, positioning, for example, MTA as something that will on its own solve um, youth unemployment. Uh, which is probably a, a, an overstatement, but um, the point of these certifications, and, and if you haven't got involved in in looking into what they actually mean for young people, um, it is incredibly important. Um, will having a MOF certification enable you to uh, get a, 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 a job on its own? Probably not. But if you are certified in Word or you are certified in Excel, you will, for sure, be more productive when you're working using those applications. Um, it's something that does uh, help young people have higher confidence. It gives them some credibility in what they know. Uh, it gives them a differentiation in what is now a very competitive academic, um, you know, arena, and will obviously, as we know, even more competitive when they actually go into the workforce. Um, and uh, yeah, they'll just have greater greater efficiency and productivity, which um, which will help them. So that's really an overview of the of the certifications. Um, a lot of you already know what they are. Um, we're having some good um, uh, progress this year with uh, with the campaign. Um, as Gabby said, there are, are ten thousand vouchers that are available. Um, we've allocated about four thousand of those so far. Um, and uh, May is going to be a very busy month um, in terms of um, uh, yeah, exams being taken. Um, so we're confident that we're going to reach the, the target, and um, I think that's fantastic that we've we've uh, we've grown that this this campaign off of last year by by five you know five times. So um, I'm happy that Gabby put this. Uh, this conference together, this web webinar together, um, she has probably the benchmark of of, uh, of something that we're going to talk today about, which is the test there, how to run them, what they are, uh, and all of that. And um, if you haven't been involved in in a test best or know what it is, do take some notes because, um, as I said, Gabby's organisation has um, has really led the way uh, over the last couple of years in in, in terms of this. So. Um, I'm open for questions, um, and uh, yeah, please uh, feel please feel free to, to ask me any. Thank you, James, for this uh, very good introduction. I mean, you know, you are an ambassador of Telecenters and also 
uh, you know, maximizing on the opportunity with the certification set. So thank you very much. Um, are there any questions, general questions that you might want to ask Jane? If you do, please unmute your microphone and uh, speak I actually up. Saw, I actually saw a question that's coming from, from Mara. Um, and uh, yeah, to address that, um, I, yeah, my opening pitch there, it was focusing on, on youth and students. Um, but yes, it does fall into the uh, to the the, uh, the unemployed arena as well. Um, this particular campaign, yes, it is. We do want to to leverage that towards young people. Um, whether that is young people that are in formal education, or whether it is young people who have graduated but don't have a job, then they are absolutely eligible to to, to be part of this campaign and to and to to have access to these vouchers. Um, yeah, so I hope that's addressed Mara's question. James, I actually have one additional question from my side around uh, how these uh, uh, vouchers are to be used in the sense that, uh, for example, if there's sort of middle-aged people who are, you know, just becoming redundant in their particular sector and they're considering to take up a job kind of in the IT sector and sort of try and start with entry level certifications like for example MPA. I mean would you think they are eligible for this campaign or not? It's a it's a very grey area, Gabby, as you know, we're kind of um kept on a pretty short leash from Microsoft in terms of um where these uh, where these vouchers go. Um I mean what what we really don't want is 10,000 uh, people, and I'm not being ageist here at all, but we don't, the, the target of the campaign is not to get 10,000 plus 50 year olds to pass MOT exam. That, that's not the target. Um, of course, there, there might be situations where you're contacted by someone that, um, as Gabby said, is either changing their career or needing to, uh, to elevate themselves by having some sort of certification. In some individual cases, that, that's fine. Um, no one's going to have a problem with that, and it certainly is relevant for them. Um, but generally speaking, with this campaign, we should be focusing at youth um, because they're really the ones that, um, you know, the, the, that are having problems right now. And if we don't have, um, uh, you know, generations, the next generation of, of young people coming out with, with something different uh, to be able to get a job, um, then we're going to be having a big problem. Um, on top of that, there's already probably uh, a couple of years of what we could call a, a lost generation of, of graduates that have come out, and we know the specific, we all know the statistics of, of Spain and Greece um, and countries like that with, with just enormous um, uh, levels of, of, of youth unemployed, um, and the problem that they will face is that as the next generation of graduates come out, they will seem more attractive to employers than ones that graduated maybe two years ago, um, because maybe they're, they're they're deemed to have a you know fresher base of knowledge and things like that. So these um, these young people that are kind of caught in the middle between graduating and stuck right in the middle of the crisis um, when jobs are very hard to come by. That's also another area where throughout your various networks in your countries and different channels that we should be focusing this on. Um, it will help, you know, help in two different ways. Obviously help them to, to show and get some, get some new skills. And it will also start seeding, uh, the ICT sector with fresh blood, uh, which it so desperately needs. Um, as, as Gabby said, uh, and depending on, on who you speak to, I think the official number is you know, a potential of 900,000 jobs in Europe um, uh, in the ICT sector that cannot be filled because uh, of lacking competencies. So, um, again, by inspiring some curiosity in, in these young people um, that have graduated, they don't have a job, they don't really know where to go, they're probably willing to do pretty much anything in order to get a job. Just to give them this first step, uh, first, uh, you know, uh, experience in the ICT sector might be the the ignition that they need to think hmm, this is this is a this is something that I'm interested in and I want to go further and actually get them into the industry um, where they'll perhaps find an easier 
easier way to get to a job. So um, I hope I haven't made that too long-winded, but um, yeah, that's what I have to say. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank, thanks, James. It's very, very, very important to you actually, you know, voice this uh, or, or this idea out. Um, are there any questions at, at this time? Because uh, really, James, uh, I, I realize you will have to go in about 15 minutes, so I just wanted to sort of try and ask uh, you a couple more questions before you go and before we go into details of, you know, the specific model in Romania and hopefully we will hear also from others how how they have run and how they're thinking of, of running the campaign. One of my questions is around, uh, you know, if you have any feedback about, you know, the fast rate, because we know there's, you know, 10,000 buses out there and I think in many countries the campaign is still ongoing until the 30th of June. But based on last year's campaign and the kind of numbers that are coming through to you, I mean, I have no idea how progress other countries are with implementing the campaign, but do you have any idea whether, I don't know, what the pass rate is? Because, you know, as we will be talking, uh, in the case of Romania, we have some, we have learned some hard lessons about, you know, all the studying that needs to happen before the certification takes place. I just wanted to pick your brain on that, if yeah, you have any feedback. Yeah, I mean, I don't, based off of last year's uh, campaign, we've made some some fairly significant changes this this year in the way that we run it and and one of those is those of you that are involved in the campaign know that I've been fairly strict on on requesting you know um, candidate information before uh, issuing and distributing the vouchers and and part of that you know the next phase once delegates have actually or candidates have actually taken their exam is that we get an indication of whether they have passed or failed last year it was the campaign actually uh, started very late, uh, even later than this year's uh, campaign. There was a you know a hard cut off at, at June 30th, and we were very rushed in getting these these 2,000 vouchers um, uh, you know applied to to, to to the candidates. And the yeah we didn't get enough information on pass and fail rates. It was difficult to get. Um, this year, I'm hoping, um, you know, everything is in place and, and as long as everyone is, is um, you know, playing by the rule book, then we should get a very good idea of, of, uh, of pass rates. That's going to be particularly interesting because, um, as you mentioned, Gabby, the whole learning piece before someone goes to take an exam, that has been addressed some in some way this year um, with, with Microsoft, uh, with some of the Telecenter local coalitions. Having access to um, to ITA subscriptions, uh, which has some learning content, um, but I, you know, I'm still very interested to hear if you know that for those of you that are using it, is that enough? Um, and, and anything else that you can give feedback on, because hopefully we will get this campaign running again next year, and and that is an area that I saw huge problems with last year, the, the pre-learning part. Um, we tried to address it this year. Um, you know, within the boundaries that Microsoft allows, um, and hopefully with the feedback that we get from you this year, we can improve that next year. Okay, thank, thank you, James. I have one question to you, James. Uh, for we are only doing the hard uh, and the MTA test, and I have some students who failed with just two percent below the uh, needed score. Is it uh, that they can only pass the test once, or can they do it repeated? They can, I mean, I, I would advise that, that if, if someone has, has failed a test like that, you know, that, that you give them another voucher, get get them, uh, try to get them get them certified, um, because that's that's really the main aim here. We want, you know, we want kids to pass. Um, but then I need to apply for you for the person one more. For example, I can say that he's failed and he's requested another voucher or how should it work practically? Yeah, that's fine. Just, I mean, imagine that it was, uh, uh, I mean, just do what you've been doing before and providing the, the details, even though it's the same details in the, in the Excel sheet, uh, in, the, in the tracker template that you've got. And then I can, uh, I can apply a, a new voucher, voucher number to that person. That's fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, are there any more questions, either from uh, partners who have started developing the, you know, their campaign? Or? I have one question uh, I had today. Hi, uh, hi. Hi, I got the question for everybody. Uh, I have similar question like uh, our colleague uh, before about uh, the retake uh, possibility. So I understand that if somebody uh, fails the exam, we should uh, uh, apply for new voucher for this person. Yes, but uh, normally I uh, usually I uh, thought, uh, I tell the uh, okay. teacher that students should be well to the test. To the test. So, so, but if it's uh, somehow uh, they failed exams, we can apply uh, for them another voucher to retake the same exam. Am I right? Or, or, or are you? Yeah, is that Piotr? Yeah, it was Piotr. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. Yeah, so. Yeah, but I, I think that's fine for you to do, Piotr. I mean, the, the um, as I said, the, the main focus here is that we get kids that pass. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that's absolutely fine. <laughs> because normally I'm telling that idea is to give the chance to testify the, as much people as uh, possible, but it's possible, but it also should generate the, the, the chance uh, for, for these people. So, uh, how, how you said before, so I think, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Okay, I don't know, I, uh, James, did you get that? Because I uh, I kind of find that uh, Piotr has a background noise. Yeah, I, I'm. Well, I'm pretty sure we we yeah we covered it as basically to um to see if vouchers could be or new vouchers could be issued to students that that failed an exam and um and that's fine um you know please go ahead and do that obviously we want we want kids to be motivated by this and not go home miserable because um because they haven't passed you know give them another chance um, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I actually have an additional question here, uh, if, if you allow me. I mean, it's interesting uh, what Mara and Piotr are asking, because we, of course, had the same kind of um, uh, uh, situations where, you know, students just fail, either because they don't prepare before or just, they just think it's a free opportunity, I'll have a go and see what it's like, and various, various other reasons, although, although as you will see, we actually onboard students through the teacher, but we still have the odd one. Um, I, I had, I had the assumption, James, that, uh, you know, it has to be, it really has to be unique people who use this voucher, but you think if the odd one, if there's just a few who yeah, I mean, just, just, just fail and then uh, they need a few more percentages to pass and if they study another week then they should be granted and it's okay to grant them another opportunity. But yeah. not to those who, who fail really miserably, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, I mean, the, as I said, you know, the, there are quite a lot of grey areas um, in the campaign and this is this is one of them. Do we want 10,000, ideally, do we want, ideally we want 10,000 individual people to pass exams. That's the 100% ideal situation. We know that isn't going to be the case. Um, and, uh, you know, we kind of positioned the campaign from the beginning as, um, uh, you know, there are retake vouchers and things like that, then that's, that's really not the purpose of the campaign. So, um, you know, I don't want it to be, again, 5,000 people that are taking two exams. I'd rather it be uh, mm -hmm. a lot more. But yeah, if there is a, a situation, you know, and you've got a kid that has studied their heart out and just missed passing by a couple of percent, um, we, we want them to be motivated. So yeah, I mean, use your best judgment, um, you know, to, to, to reissue uh, uh, exam vouchers if, if that's the case, yeah. Okay, thank you. I saw that um, Zarko had a question, um, and I'm just reading it now. Uh, yeah, so if there is a, a partner organisation, um, I'm assuming that's a Telecentre Europe partner who's, who's interested in, in joining the campaign, 
who the right contact person is to help them with registration of the CertiPort test centre and obtaining Microsoft vouchers. The CertiPort test centre, uh, in terms of registering that, I'll type it in the window here. Um, go to, I'll get the, hang on. Um, because it's a very easy thing to do. Um, James, are you still there? Hello? I don't know if anyone can hear me because I can only hear myself at the time. I can, we can I really can 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 <laughs> Okay, good. To the place where you need to, uh, where you can register a test center um, in terms of who you contact in order to get Microsoft vouchers. Um, contact me. Um, there is a process involved in terms of we want to know what you're what you're going to be doing with the campaign and, and what your activities will be. Uh, we've obviously got only a short amount of time left for the campaign uh, because the, uh, the 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 finalisation of it is the 30th of June. But but please do contact me. Um, James, uh, maybe it's uh, important to mention that uh, whichever way uh, things are done, all the vouchers that are part of this campaign will expire on the 30th of June. So, yeah, yeah, you might right. end up with, in your account with them unused, but then this is not something that either of us like. Yeah, well, that's, that's what we're trying to, to avoid this year by having the Telecenter Europe partners identify candidates before um before they receive vouchers because then we know okay there is a candidate there and they're taking it on this date um and of course people can can, can be ill or something like that and not show up to the exam but um i think we'll have a better utilization rate than we did last year last year out of 2000 vouchers there was about 120 that didn't get you um which isn't the end of the world but um you know i i uh we're hoping to close that percentage down. Uh, I saw some other questions come in here. Uh, from Mara, okay. Um, so James, let me just clarify this. So uh, for, uh, at the moment, there are 10 partner organizations who develop this campaign. And I'm sure maybe there are others, I don't know if on this call, if, if there are partners who are not involved in the campaign but would like to join the campaign, I'll buy it late. Is that still a possibility? Yeah, I mean, con contact me. Um, what, what you should be aware of is that if you do want to be part of the campaign, there is a, um, a kind of a very, it's not a long drawn out thing, but it's kind of like a proposal form. So when you're proposing about what you will do and, and your your activities for the campaign, who you'll be targeting and things like that, um, Microsoft do have to have to kind of give the green light um, for, for, for companies coming into the campaign, um, but we can get that turnaround done pretty quickly. Um, and is it possible to do it, for example, just using, a, say, as a pilot, 100 exams? Yeah. I mean, yeah. some organization that has had hazard experience to this before could, for example, request 50 or 100. Set up quickly a testing center because you do that in 20 minutes all online. Yeah. And, uh, and basically, then you receive your 100 exams. From, through this campaign, and you can then invite some students from high schools or, you know, whatever your outreach community is to young people, just invite them to come into your college center and experience these. Yeah, yeah, that's that's absolutely fine. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I would, if, if you are only going to deliver one exam, I would probably say it's not really worth the while, but, you know, if you even have, uh, you know, a group of, of of young people, say, I don't know, 20 or 30 people that that are coming into your locations, maybe for some training or something like that, um, and you'd like to, to to focus them on one of these certifications, then 
then that's brilliant. You know, that's what it's all about. So yeah, do contact me. Let me know, and we can we can get this sorted out. Okay, thank you, James. Are uh, are there any kind of questions on this topic? I, I think uh, that's the best for people just to get in touch with you directly. So if you, I mean, people who don't know you, maybe just uh, write into the chat pad if you don't mind your email address. Yeah, I put and it. Then, I put it down. Yeah, there, yeah. 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 Naturally, I, I know this is right there. Okay. Okay. Um, are there any other thoughts from your particular countries around the, around the campaign? Anything you might like to share or anything you might like to ask? No, I think oh, I'm, I'm just I'm yeah? just reading through here that I think. Um, the Hans from um, from Belgium had a question, and that was the minimum score, the pass score. Um, for right. MTA, I know that that is seventy percent. Um, for Moss, I think it might be a little bit um, higher. Um, I think Alina, if you can come in, because you might know a little bit better about um, uh, about the. Um, uh, campaign. Do you mind, James, if I invite Alina to come in and yeah. maybe share any of this information with us? Let me yeah. just uh, introduce Alina to all of you. So Alina is representing 30, 30 Pro in Romania, and she has been really instrumental and the brain behind the uh, operations of the campaign in Romania. So I think um, she's a good resource person. <laughs> for you, I mean, during this webinar, but also, you know, uh, after this webinar is over. Alina, I hope you don't mind if I encourage people to contact you, because you seem to know a lot about it. So do you know about the scores? Yeah, I know. So for MTA, I the one Can you guys hear Alina? No, we we okay. can't hear you. <laughs> you have to speak up a little bit, Alina, because uh, or I turn up your microphone. I can't speak louder than this. Maybe. Sorry. Now you hear me? Yeah, it's it's a sort of audible, I think. So do you hear me or not? Uh, I, I can hear you, but I don't know. Can the others please confirm if you can hear Alina? Okay. Okay, so apparently you are uh, hearing me. Uh, for MTA, like uh, Dean said, 70%, and for Microsoft Office specialists, it's uh, uh, 750 points. Uh, the maximum uh, points that a candidate can expect and achieve during um, a uh, most uh, exam is uh, 1,000. But the minimum that he needs to acquire is uh, 750 points. Is uh, that regardless of which exam they do? So if they do Word or Excel or Outlook or whatever, is the same percentage they need to achieve? From my knowledge and experience, uh, I can say yes. I'm not sure for Office 2013, uh, which are the minimum uh, points that a candidate needs uh, to achieve. Uh, these vouchers, and I think this is also an important thing for all the data uh, center co coordinators, is that the um, most vouchers that uh, we receive for example, are available for 2007, 2010, and 2013 certification. So I think this gives the opportunity to the uh, community and to the candidates to, to check their skills uh, depending on uh, the most, uh, uh, I don't know, familiar Office application uh, and version of it, if you know what I mean. Um, also, from the last year uh, experience, uh, when we had only NPA certification, 
Uh, I can tell you for sure that this, uh, our candidates are putting this certification uh, much more serious. And uh, we also, as uh, the coordinator of the campaign in Romania, uh, based on our, the experience we had uh, last year, uh, we are encouraging them more and they are taking us the more seriously to prepare themselves because, um, I don't know in other countries, but in Romania, the curricula that uh, they have in uh, high school uh, uh, or in uh, um, universities doesn't cover the competencies or at least doesn't cover all the competencies or the objectives of this certification program and of the exam. Uh, that is uh, why uh, the candidates are encouraged and uh, they do self-study. It's very important, at least for the Romanian candidates, because of uh, the lack of the uh, 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 competencies that they are achieving through the high school, it's important to, to study on uh, themselves. And uh, in order to, to support this, we are offering them uh, free resources. We started them all from our IT Academy, uh, basically EOS. <laughs> Uh, EOS is the uh, IT Academy and also the uh, materials that Microsoft Learning are providing for free, like uh, exam reviews, uh, student study guides, and so on. Uh, Irina, if I can just come in here, so I don't know if that was the sort of um, uh, everybody could hear. But basically what Irina is saying that, um, and what uh, we also mentioned originally with things, was that it's really important to not forget, you know, the learning part. Because, because if you don't have the learning part, then you, or you can't choose, you don't have control over the level of, you know, of a readiness of one young person to sit an exam, then there you will most probably get lots of fails. And uh, partly, you know, 25%, I have to say, I have to be open with, uh, with you on this. Last year, when we ran the campaign, 25% of our students failed because, you know, they just didn't sort of study well enough. Or just because, although, as Alina said, we did provide them for MTA, lots of resources that are free. And this is important for you to know that you do have free resources for um for preparation for this exam some of them are made available by microsoft some of, the, of them are made available by 34 testing centers and some of them are just freely available for download so so please don't neglect the the, the sort of learning side of it if you would like uh, we can maybe follow up after this webinar and Alina can put together in a very short email some links that we find, find uh, found useful <laughs> to use with our with our students in order to give them some preparation material. Secondly, in a view on our experience of last year, uh, we have applied to Microsoft for a Microsoft IT Academy uh, license or program membership. I don't know how familiar uh, you are with the Microsoft IT Academy program, and I think some of the countries have received free access to one of these Microsoft IT Academy subscriptions. But the idea is that in this academy, you have every single detailed resource about teaching and learning on all the MOS applications and all the MTA applications and all the software development stuff, servers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Gazi, can, I, to... can yes. I interrupt you for a second? Yes, please. Yeah, sorry. It's just, um, I, I just want to share something about this, about, you know, this experience. We had already last year yes, some please. of us trainees, trainees uh, who took the exam. 
um, and they were prepared. They really, you know, they spent a, a really a week preparing and so on, and a lot of them failed. Why? Because they were not, they, they could not actually, so I don't know if the link that you are going to send could um, help us with that, but they could not actually try it on a fake exam. And I think what really was the, the, the point for us, um, I mean for the students, was the fact that uh, the time, there is a time constraint in answering the questions. So I think this is something that they were not really well prepared and that was the issue. Uh, and um, when I spoke to James, because we have, uh, we are organizing, we're using the campaign here in Interface 3, and I could discuss, but I mean, share the experience later on. But it's something that uh, I asked him, and I also called um, the company organizing this in Brussels, but there is nothing that Microsoft provides in order to have online testing and so on. So I don't know, if, would, you, would you have something? Would you, could you share? Uh, some uh, links and uh, some tools that we could use so that people, you know, um, study and uh, and prepare the exam, but also test themselves live. Mm, I, I mean, the only thing uh, it's, a, it's a very good point actually that you are making because I think it's quite, it would be very very useful for anyone to you know just do a simulation or a practice test before they do the real exam or familiarization to try the level. I mean, the only thing Alina might know more, and Alina, please feel free to come in, but I know of a website which Microsoft has developed, which is called areucertifiable.com. Do you know about it? I mean, I, I put it in a chat, and if you go there in areucertifiable.com, you can actually do uh, mock, mock tests for, um, for MTA, but not could you, could you share the link, maybe? Could you share the link? It would be great. Yeah, yeah, put uh, it in the chat. Uh, and, and the thing is, I can share on my side, I can share one that I found, uh, but I'm not sure, I, I need to, to, to look at that again, but I'm not sure, I think it's in French. But the thing is also, I believe that it could be a, a, an option to have, a, to have a, an English speaking uh, test, test to be made. But I'm, I'm happy to share, I'm going to paste the link towards the, the, the fake, I uh, would say, exam, but I think it's in French. Uh, with you guys. <laughs> I have a question to all of you. So, are you passing these exams in your languages? Because in Latvian, you know, only do the English test for MTA. They are not available. MTA, I think, are only available in English, Mara. Yes. And the reason, oh. apparently, because I ask. And yeah, apparently, the reason, not... sorry. I was just wondering because Lorenz mentioned French because we are only doing it in English. I'm, I'm to, and Maha, I'm not talking MTA. I'm talking MOS. Oh, you are talking MOS. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. I mean, the, I asked Microsoft the same thing about MTA and what they, their response about MTA being in English is that uh, all the professional certifications that follow the MTA exam, which is an associate, so anything professional is only done in English. So therefore, they said there is not a business reason behind the localizing any of the MTA exam. But yes, most are localized, not in Romania. They are not, I don't think they are in Latvian Mara, but I think they are in French, in German, in Russian, and in a few of the Spanish and the, some of these uh, <laughs> the languages which are uh, worldwide used. And to Lawrence, I think you were asking me, I sent you the link, this areocertifiable.com is for NCA exams. I don't know if there's anything like this for most. Alina, do you know? Uh, I uh, just want to go into this back for, to answer Mara's question, because I was just checking the online or the uh, exam system you need in order to take the NCA, and here I uh, have access to all your uh, uh, languages in which MTA, for example, can be taken. So we have Chinese, English, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Portuguese, Russian, Mara, perhaps this uh, <laughs> helps you, and Spanish. So these are the all the languages that are available for the MTA certification. Oh, I'm uh, sorry in that case, I didn't mislead you because I was 
sort of quite sure that they are on the move list. So yeah. So, thank uh, you. Thank you, Alina, no, for clarifying that. Your information is correct because English uh, is the language that all the certifications provided by third support, let's say like this. Um, um, you can find any exams in English. Uh, but for different uh, products and certification, uh, considering, as you said, the uh, involvement and the uh, 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 orders that are uh, the search report is receiving from that country, they are localizing them on land. Okay, um, you asked me another question, and uh, I didn't hear exactly about MOS. Do you know if there are any simulations for free for the MOS exam? Uh, for free, I'm not aware. Uh, and if I found at some point a link where you could access three questions or something like this, uh, and the point of this link was uh, uh, that the candidates to get familiarized with the exam system uh, environment. But there were only three questions, and I don't think that uh, it has the candidate so much. Uh, I can tell you that uh, for uh, most and also for MCA, I believe there are uh, simulations or uh, practice tests that the candidate can um, uh, buy from uh, different suppliers, vendors like 34, uh, and they can uh, uh, get used to the environment of the exam. Also, the system in this practice test is very similar, if not uh, perhaps 100% like the environment that they are exposed during the exam. So basically, uh, for our candidates, we encourage them to uh, to buy this kind of product, the ebook or the practice test. And uh, we always tell them that, okay, now you are having this opportunity for free, you receive the voucher for free, and it's perhaps one, one sense you will get in your life. Uh, some uh, financial involvement from your part will make a big difference uh, in, or, uh, in order for you to achieve this certificate, which will be very useful uh, in the future. So basically, for free, I don't know any practice path or fake exam. Uh, but I know where you can, uh, from where you can acquire uh, uh, for a fee, this kind of simulation. Also, I mean, I just want to come in here and say that uh, those of you who have received uh, the Microsoft IT Academy subscription, you know, you do have various languages, uh, uh, all materials in various languages, but uh, mostly uh, English, French, Spanish, German, Russian, Chinese, and Arabic, and stuff like that. So please look into into your academies if you haven't already. Uh, we at EOS have been using an academy for, I don't know, for a few years now, so if you need any help with onboarding on how to access, you know, the material and the academic course curriculum and stuff like that, which you can then give to your students or the people who prepare. Let me know and I set up a one-to-one -one with you and I can show you, you know, in very simple steps where to find the information you want because it's a very, very complex <laughs> kind of program to get through. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Anna. Hi. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry I had some problems with my microphone. Um, I just wanted to share our experience. We came, uh, I'm sitting from the We are from the Cinema Movie Digitale, and we have got 1,000 vouchers to distribute within our uh, the network uh, of schools. Um, and uh, so we became an IT academy, and PCF tests are included in this program. Uh, so we have organized uh, sessions, key prep uh, sessions, um, 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 and that helps 
uh, students and teachers to prepare for this participation. Um, this is our first year. We are very happy to uh, be part of this campaign. And so we, we don't know if you're going to be successful, very much successful or not. Um, we are trying to prepare students uh, with the uh, material um, on, that Microsoft um, has online. Um, but uh, they feel, in fact, they are not um, ready for the certification. And this feedback says, seems to help a uh, lot. Um, we are going to, um, students are going to take a chance mainly in May and June. So um, I, I wanted to ask if, uh, um, are we late? <laughs> I mean, 1,000 students uh, taking exams in May and June. Is, is that uh, okay? I mean, is that normal? Well, I, I I don't know who you're asking, <laughs> Anna. But uh, you you haven't you haven't certified any of your students yet. Um, just a few of them because um, this is a process I wanted to share. Um, actually, we uh, involved 40 schools, and each school became a test center so that students could um, sit for exams in, in their own schools. Um, after that, uh, we, uh, at Fondazione Mondo Digitale, became IT Academy and we shared uh, the material with the 40 schools. But the key prep exams um, are only in our computers here <laughs> locally, so we can't share with them. Um, we have shared it with the schools around, we are in Rome, so we have shared uh, the key prep exams with the schools in Rome. Sorry, can you just say, Anna, I missed that. What, what is it that you can't share? Sorry? I didn't understand what you cannot share with the other school. The key prep test. If you become an IT Academy, uh, you can get uh, material, uh, online material, and also key prep test. Yes, but uh, so uh, you could actually uh, set up uh, an instructor in the IT Academy for each of the schools. So find one teacher from each school who would be enrolled right. as a trainer and as an instructor in your academy, and then they can uh, send to the students exactly the material they need for their preparation. Yes, and the simulation says, though, uh, we have it only in Rome. So, um, I guess it's going to be um, there's going to be a great difference uh, among students having um, having done the simulation test, the C prep test, and students uh, um, away from Rome that can't get into um, that can't have the simulation test. So um, I was wondering if this link you're sharing uh, could be uh, useful. Um, also for um, uh, places where they don't have IT Academy. Well, I, I think as we said, I think for MTA it could be useful if they do MTA exams. But mm. for most, there is not much available for free, I'm afraid. Okay, so that means that students that can't have access to this teacher test are going to uh, fail more easily than the others, is that it? I, well, it depends. It depends. I think you're just, uh, maybe you would be better off uh, doing a pilot in a school because uh, if you give them the learning materials, I mean, at least this is our experience, and Alina, you feel me in here. But if you download the PDF of yes. MOAC, Microsoft Official Academic Courseware, Yes. and make it available to the student. For example, a student who wants to take an Excel exam will be sent strictly only the MOAC on Excel. So then they have all the study material they need to develop the technical knowledge to pass the exam, with or without a simulation or practice test. And, uh, you know, maybe just run a pilot in a school and see what the results are and see whether this method works. The problem is, though, that you don't, you're running a little bit out of time. Yes, 
that's it. So I don't know. I think it's a chance, you know. Okay. You just have to take, give them as much material as um, as you can from the Microsoft IT Academy, and at the end of the day, it will be up to them of how hard they study because you can't control that. You know, sometimes there are people or schools where you give a lot of material and the results are still not great. In other schools, they have no material, but they do well. Yeah, but yeah, okay. download download from uh, from uh, the IT Academy all the PDFs for the exams they need, and you know it's up to them to study really. I guess like for any sure. other exam. Sure. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alina. Do you want to come in here and 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 uh, say something about them? I don't know about what else we can do to. <laughs> Make sure that these children, the students, pass or something. I think for basically, uh, in the end, uh, it uh, depends on them. So, and if they are having, because this is the issue here, it's also important to have the proper resources and materials in order to start, because you can find different and plenty of materials, but only part of them are uh, exactly on the competencies and uh, on the objectives of the exam. Uh, what IT Academy uh, is offers to their students is definitely 100% uh, based on the certification level. Um, I also put on um, link some time ago. I managed to identify there. It's the uh, measureup.com, uh, and I put identify there some uh, practice tests for MCA. In case you are interested, regarding Mara's question, Mara, you were asking me if I could provide you the Russian link. The uh, link, uh, as I told you in the chat. Um, I uh, uh, logged in in the exam system in order to see for MTA uh, in which languages the candidate can take the exam. So basically, I don't have material for access to information uh, for MTA or most in Russian. Um, so regarding what we can do with our candidates in order to get uh, certified, uh, basically, if they study and if they are uh, uh, buying ebooks and they are using our resources and these uh, practice tests, uh, I know for sure because we have in Romania some youth that uh, they manage to pass the exam. The exam. Uh, if uh, I if I, uh, I should draw a comparison between MTA and most, I can tell you that uh, they find Microsoft Office Specialist exams more difficult um, um, comparing with MTA. Uh, basically, because in Microsoft Office Specialist, you uh, need to um, uh, resolve, resolve some tasks. So you receive a spreadsheet, for example, and uh, you need to introduce a formula and uh, use a uh, pivot table and so on. Uh, for MCA certification, uh, it's a uh, uh, test which uh, is composed from questions with uh, multiple choices. So uh, the chance is if you learn for an, an MTA exam, since you have to choose from some answers, uh, it will uh, give the candidate uh, at least a generic point of view. If this is not sort of something, the answers somehow help them. Uh, nevertheless, the uh, important thing is that if they don't prepare for this exam and if they don't prepare they don't pass the exam. This is also the information that I have uh, from them. Um, 
they, some of them more recognize that uh, last year in the campaign, the most of the new ones that we have this year, they treated this matter like a game, or they just didn't see the importance of this certification. Uh, and now they are much more serious about this. Uh, we have uh, youth that uh, couldn't participate in the campaign this year because they already finished their studies. Uh, now uh, they are working in different companies and uh, they got back to us in order to take the exam. And uh, obviously, since they are now paying for the voucher and the resources, uh, the percentage of for promovability is much more higher. Any other questions? I hope that I answered the question in the end. It was about uh, resources. No, that's it. I think, uh, yeah, thank you very much for your input. I mean, if there's, I think it's as much learning experience for us as it is for you, you know, but it, it's only that we're doing it for the second time and that we, we, we thought we we're going to get all things right this time, but obviously not, and there's still lots of issues. But we, we, we do, do jump for this opportunity because it creates a lot of awareness and it helps us with the uh, National Coalition for the Civil Job. Anyway, over to you for, for more questions. Technically, we still have 15 minutes. Uh, to do any questions and answers. So, this is the time, you know, to ask any burning questions. I have a big question, Gabby, you know more about the deadlines. It said that the vouchers will expire in June. What does it mean? Does it mean 30th of June? And is yeah, that yeah. that the last exam can be taken? Yeah, so all the exam vouchers will expire on the 30th of June. That means that the last day when an exam can be taken in a center is the 30th of June. Now, to push it a bit beyond, you can probably take it the next day after because the servers in the United States are serve our doctors. <laughs> you, you know, but really, yes, they take this as a timeline. I mean, if, if nobody uses or you cannot distribute, then they will just expire and that's it. Of course, that period is very bad uh, taking into account that high school graduates have exams, university students have exams, so uh, this is maybe mm. for the next year. If we plan, then June shouldn't be or end of May is expired date. It just to think about the next campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're quite can, can I just interrupt? Yeah. Can I just interrupt? Yeah. I think that when I discussed with uh, James, I asked for that, and I think it's a matter of financial year. And I think that uh, Microsoft cannot report um, these vouchers after the 30th of June because their new financial year starts on the 1st of July. I think that was the the, the reason why we can take them for. I mean, later than the, than the 30th of June. Oh, I think that's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can give you a little bit more context, but it's not going to help in the sense that, you know, normally the whole negotiation started back in July and August last year, and they were going to be available at the beginning of September when the academic school year starts for uh, students, you know, September and beginning of October. But then for some kind of reason that uh, nobody really understands, I think it's approval systems and stuff like that, it took a lot longer. So I don't know when you uh, guys got to access to your certification vouchers, but I think they became available sort of January or February this year. Is that right? Um, the, the, you, if I understand your, understood your question, you mentioned when, when were the vouchers available, is that right? Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, I think they were, well, in fact, the campaign was launched in, in, uh, end of October during Malta's conference, do you remember? And it, it was on the, yeah. 5th of Nove on the 5th of November, I think that was when the campaign was launched. Yeah, yeah, no, but I, I meant when did you actually get your hands on the vouchers? Oh, I, I think I asked them in, in, in January, February round. That's, that's when yeah. I started, I mean, when I organized internally uh, for people to start preparing and so on. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the other people's experience is, but I think most of us received the 
the exams early, earliest to December, I think. So maybe this is one of the big feedbacks that, um, you know, we can provide. Because Mara, I think you're right. For me, it would have been really useful to be able to start September, October. Because towards the end of the school year, they like to say exams, yeah. all sorts of other things happening, and they're already on holiday mood, everybody. Uh, so, excuse me, if I understand, uh, there's going to be another campaign next year. Is that for sure? We, we are hoping, but I think it will really depend on uh, the kind of results that the campaign will get this year. Mm -hmm. And I think the results are, are, you know, are showing good. And I said they're showing, okay, okay, some people failing, some people passing, but, you know, it's just a really important awareness raising campaign and stuff. So I think, I think, yeah, probably, yeah. Okay, that's great news. Um, yeah, if that's it, are we going to know it beforehand, much beforehand, or we will have to wait until November or whatever again? You know, I, I think that this is only my experience from uh, the last few years and lots of discussion with James. I think uh, only after the campaign is finished and that all the reports are uh, sent to Microsoft and, you know, they look at what kind of exams were taken and what the percentage rate was, blah, blah, blah. Then okay. we will be able to kind of start advocating for negotiating a new law, and but actually with the request to speed up the process and have everything ready in September. I think okay. that we really need all of you, really all of us should be pushing for that. So I okay. Yeah. You to do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, really. I agree. I, on my side, I agree, Gabby, because I, uh, the thing is, what I did for my for my students this year is to make some times for them to study. Uh, we dedicated some sessions where they can study here in Interface 3 uh, for the certification, so that they don't prepare it at home. Uh, but we said, okay, we dedicate I don't know how many how many sessions, but they are here, they're studying and they're preparing it. So I, I think it would be a really great idea to have have it beforehand so that for the other, uh, I would say, trainings here, uh, I could speak to the other training coordinator and make sure that they dedicate some time for people, and I'm talking MOS, to uh, prepare for the, the MOS certification. Hmm. Okay, yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you. We should aggregate our response <laughs> to, to, to actually push forward for next year. I mean, I agree. Laurent, do you have, do you have access to an IT Academy? Sorry, say it again. Didn't hear very well. Do, do you have access to an IT Academy? Well, we had. We had, actually, but we stopped it this year. And the thing is, we consider, the thing is, depending on the results of the, 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 the campaign this year, we might consider, get, you know, starting the Academy again. But you realize that uh, people who participate in this voucher campaign, they receive the one year free subscription from Microsoft. They receive what, sorry? One year free subscription to the program. Okay, no, I was not aware of that. I was not informed about that. Yes, yes, it is that's true. Good, that's good to know. <laughs> yes, well, for next year, please keep that in mind. Okay, great. Thanks for the info. So uh, I'll make sure that we, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we, uh, because the thing I spoke to Jim, James, and he, uh, uh, or maybe I didn't understand very well, but he didn't mention anything that uh, a free, uh, a free access to that. Uh, uh, but well, thanks for the, the info. Mm, sure. Yes, also because it was very useful for schools that they could share material with all the students in the school. Um, and leaving the vouchers as a reward for uh, uh, best students. Um, so in this way, m much more many people can um, can study and uh, use Microsoft material. Okay. Okay. So that's great feedback from all of you. I know this isn't an easy process. But uh, I hope it is worthwhile, you know, for as many young people as possible, you know, to be able to benefit from this. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure the turnout, you know, after all this campaign will be great. Any other, any other kind of comments or, you know, questions?
or I don't know, next step, because I would like to take the last two, two minutes, you know, to uh, discuss with you perhaps, you know, whether whether we should set up, I don't know, another call. Uh, I don't know, in a few weeks time to kind of review, see what's been happening, but also explore other topics, you know, related to, for example, the benefits of uh, resources in the academy or other learning resources. Or, for example, some of you might want to share some other certification campaigns. I know Mara is involved with ECDL, and Mara, maybe you can share with us, you know, some thoughts and ideas about, you know, Certification. I mean, the topic today was mostly about the Microsoft Access campaign because most of us are doing it and we really wanted to support each other and learn from each other. But I really want, would like to get a little bit of feedback, you know, about, you know, if, if you have anything else that uh, would be of interest for you to discuss in any of these upcoming webinars and, you know, whether it was useful for you. Oh, this one was very useful. And uh, Gabby, do you think uh, we have some regularity in the webinars or we just organize them when it's ad hoc uh, topic, something like, uh, you know, the network running, is it scheduled like once uh, in months or once in two months or? Well, um, you know, I think we have as much flexibility as we really like to have. I mean, from uh, the strictly from the Unite IT project point of view, we have to have one every year, you know. But uh, this this surely isn't, you know, necessarily the, the best way forward. I think we can we can plan, you know, on speaking you know, when, whenever we feel like it. So the question is, should we just uh, try to speak whenever something comes up? Or should we just plan one every three months and then we try to have some discussion beforehand to see what we want to discuss by voice and in a group rather than having one-to-one? -one? Because I think this is the benefit of a webinar. You know, you hear from 10 people at the same time on a topic and that triggers your thinking and uh, gives you maybe some ideas and solutions. If you have lots of one-to-ones, it's more time and you keep putting it off and on. I don't know how many of uh, us are going to the Ascent conference on these fields, but there might be some new information and maybe some need to follow up or discuss after the conference. Okay. okay, are you going, Mara, now? You mean on the 6th of May? Yes, yes. Okay, so, yeah, I, I would, I'm not going, but I would love to hear about uh, what will be discussed. It's one of the uh, most important conferences on e skills and inclusion. Because if, year, so. uh, if we talk about certifications and one topic which uh, LICTE is trying to promote in Latvia, I don't know how it's interesting for you, that both in the high school system and also in the ICT training for unemployed, that the programs all should end with certification, you know, not just computer courses or not just, you know, ICT courses, but that they end with certification. And in Europe, you have now a lot of uh, policy documents support this, so this is a big step we are doing in Latvia. And this mm -hmm. is something that maybe it's worth to discuss the approaches and if you are interested in this in your countries as well. We can discuss it sometime. I don't say necessary after a week or two, but this is a, a big topic related to skills and certifications in our field. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah, I think it is a very important topic. I mean, in Romania, you know, there's quite a lot of uh, focus on certification as well. And uh, I, we call it not necessarily certification, but validation of skills, they call it. I mean, we have been setting up lots of centers that validate your skills. So some people have been gaining them un informally. Yes. You know, some people learn individually or they learn in some work environment from somebody else, but they cannot prove. They can't go for a better job because it is some proof that they have the skills and therefore certification is becoming bigger and bigger here. And I think ECDL is actually a big player in putting this forward. 
you know. So, so yes, I would like to discuss, and maybe Mara, we can set up this next webinar to discuss this within the context of youth employability, really. Yes, yes, that we can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometime in May, I don't know how available people are, but I, I would very happily work with you to put this webinar, next webinar together. Okay, we'll think about this. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how do the others feel about it. It is also interesting for me. I mean, there is a discussion in Croatia about the, uh, the development of the, the final exam, which we call Natura for the vocation part of the program. We have it for the uh, for the general education, but so far we don't have it in in vocational education. Okay, so Jarko, maybe in that case, you know, if this is a topic of interest, you can work with Mara and myself and anyone else who was interested to, to actually put together a call around this because, you know, I would like to put even more in my country to have some, some more delivered on this topic. Okay, then. I think I, I can't believe we've used up uh, an hour and a half already, and I'm sure, you know, if we take a coffee, we could have continued for another hour. <laughs> so... I um, I think I will, we will have to close here because the WebEx uh, platform that has hosted us is needed for another call, which we will be starting in the next few minutes. Uh, I just uh, like to take the chance to say thank you very much for all of you, for your time and your input and your thoughts and your ideas and everything else. Happy connecting off webinar. Webinar, you know, just feel free to contact each other, ask Alina, Mara, you know, and and hopefully, you know, contact each other through the group, through the working group on education training and certification on the Unite IT platform. And before I go, can I just uh, please uh, ask you, please invite other people to join these working groups because the more there are, the more sharing there will be. And you know, neither of us can individually scan everything that's going out there in the world. So yeah, let's help each other, you know, be as knowledgeable as we possibly can in this area. So thank you very much. Have a nice afternoon. It's a holiday tomorrow and the day after tomorrow in Romania. So um, yeah. I hope you will take a few nice relaxing days too if you have some time off. Bye everyone. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. Bye, thank you. Bye Gabby, thanks. Bye. bye.